Ben Jonson's little-known poem, Two Songs Sung by Daedalus, from his play, Pleasure Reconciled to Virtue, concludes with an astonishing couplet. Make haste, make haste, for this the labyrinth of beauty is. The image is striking in and of itself, strangely oxymoronical, for labyrinths and mazes are generally considered frightening affairs, not objects of beauty. Yet of course, we immediately grasp how the complex problems and deep secrets of the labyrinth capture the essence of beauty. It is not that which lies at the centre of the maze that is beautiful, but rather the maze itself. Likewise, beauty is not a destination, nor an end goal. As Thomas Aquinas observes, beauty arrests motion. It is not going anywhere. It is the very thing before us that roots us to the present moment. Like a maze, beauty is something we get lost in. We can spend hours wandering about its corridors, all sense of time dissolving. As is always the case with Ben Jonson, there is even more layered meaning to this metaphor. Daedalus, the narrative voice of the poem, was the legendary Greek inventor often credited as the father of modern carpentry. He is most well known now, however, as the father of Icarus. Icarus, who flew too close to the sun during Daedalus and Icarus's daring escape from Crete, and therefore fell to his death. Indeed, the phrase, to fly too close to the sun, derives from this myth. Daedalus was an inventor and architect long before he fashioned the wing-like contraptions to facilitate his escape. Indeed, Daedalus built the labyrinth of Crete, the same labyrinth that imprisoned the Minotaur and, later on, its very own creator. Daedalus is therefore something of an archetypal creator figure, one who is both exalted and trapped by his own creative impulse. It is the very genius and perhaps beauty of the labyrinth's construction that proves dangerous to its own maker. We might also examine how the Minotaur, half man, half bull, and the offspring of bestiality, provides a metaphorical cipher for man's primitive, therianthropic urges. Daedalus has imprisoned this monster at the heart of his own labyrinth, imprisoned the beast in beauty. But this is only a temporary measure. Repression can only delay the inevitable so long. Eventually, Daedalus himself becomes imprisoned within the very same walls he built to harbour the Minotaur. He becomes the beast at the labyrinth's heart, and at this juncture he must escape, or else lose himself forever. The importance of this myth is manifold. We are all of us capable of creating beauty. A few of us imprison the Minotaur and escape the labyrinth. But what is the secret to navigating the labyrinth, to eluding the bestial monster and soaring to freedom? David Herrerius explains, The mythos of Icarus and Daedalus, Dante and Virgil, Theseus and the Minotaur, among others, reveal their secrets by having been guided by their Onero psychopompus. The psychopomp is a Greek word that literally means soul guide. Without these guides, we cannot navigate the twists and turns of the maze. Without Ariadne, Theseus could not have escaped the labyrinth of Crete. Without Virgil, Dante would have become lost in the dark runnels of the Inferno. What is fascinating, however, is that in many respects the myth of Daedalus and Icarus is a double-edged sword, revealing the price of failing to listen to and follow our guide. Daedalus, in this example, is the architect of the labyrinth, as well as the soul guide of his son, Icarus. This is a fascinating insight, for it indicates that the deeper spiritual muse within us, the soul, is the true source of beauty rather than the intellect or hand. As John Lane observed, beauty appears wherever soul appears. 
we can only be guided toward beauty and through its traps by this inner psychopomp. Daedalus gives Icarus clear instructions. Do not fly too close to the sun, or the wax used to fashion your wings will melt and you will fall. Icarus disobeys his father, and so he plummets to his death. It's a tragic story, one that has resonated for thousands of years. Unlike the other archetypes Herarius describes, this is a shadow archetype the nightmare of what happens when we fail to heed the warnings of our innermost soul. We fall, and we lose part of ourselves forever. Daedalus escapes his labyrinth, but at a terrible price. The poet Ovid beautifully encapsulates the tragedy and loss of this moment. And now Samos, sacred to Juno, lay ahead to the left. Delos and Paros were behind them, Lebinthos and Calymne, rich in honey to the right, when the boy began to delight in his daring flight, and abandoning his guide, drawn by desire for the heavens, soared higher. His nearness to the devouring sun softened the fragrant wax that held the wings, and the wax melted. He flailed with bare arms, but losing his oar-like wings, he could not ride the air. Even as his mouth was crying his father's name, it vanished into the dark blue sea, the Icarian Sea, called after him. The unhappy father, now no longer a father, shouted, Icarus, Icarus, where are you? Which way should I be looking to see you? Icarus, he called again. Then he caught sight of the feathers on the waves and cursed his inventions. He laid the body to rest in a tomb and the island was named Icaria after his buried child. Thus, the price of failing to heed our soul is not only loss and grief, but also bitterness and alienation from the very beauty we have striven so long to build and to comprehend. I suppose this leads us to an ultimate question. Is it better to remain trapped in our labyrinths, lost in the fantasies and obsessions at the risk of falling prey to, or worse, becoming our inner monsters? Or do we chance a daring escape, following our soul guide through hell's mazes, pursuing the promise of freedom, with knowing always there is a risk of a more dreadful fate, that should we fail, we will lose everything and be exiled from the labyrinth forever, never again to tread its fathomless yet wondrous halls. Make haste, make haste, for this, the labyrinth of beauty is.